service here at Trinity Temple. We're excited that you guys have chosen to worship with us today. If this is your first time, we're so excited that you've set aside time enough to be able to spend with us this morning. If you're a part of our regular crew that worship with us every single week, listen, we are so excited that you're here. So it doesn't matter if it's your first time or if this is your every time you're here worshiping with us, we're glad that you're here. Uh, please remember to send us your prayer requests. You hear me say this every single week because it's important to us. What's important to you is important to us and we value being able to pray for you. So please make sure you send us your prayer requests because we've got a team that wants to pray for you every single day. We can't do that if you won't give us your prayer requests. Again, thank you for joining us today in our worship. Thank you for sending us your prayer requests. We're excited that you're here worshiping with us. I'm going to be back in just a few moments. We're going to be talking today about it's not as hopeless as you think. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back.
to Jesus to wash my crimson stain white is his blood so precious till not a stain Remains till not a stain to Jesus All fullness dwells with Him He healeth my diseases He doth my soul redeem It's not as hopeless as you think. Our Father and our God, we thank you for bringing us here today. I thank you for our friends who have chosen to worship with us. Lord, some of them worship with us every single week. Some of them are brand new. They haven't worshiped with us before, but we thank you for bringing them to this worship experience with us. Be with us today. Move in a special way. Speak to us, and we will not forget to give you the honor, the praise, and all of the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's not as hopeless as you think. Our scripture today is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And in that scripture, it says that, 
that Zacharias, who was a priest from the tribe of, the, of Levi, served the Lord during the reign of Herod in Judah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. And the Bible says, or gives them a great compliment. The scripture says that they were godly and devoted people. Man, that's amazing. You see, when our Bible story begins today, it reminds us that, that they were devoted and they were godly people. And they had been praying, verse number 7 says, they had been praying that God would give them a children. And yet nothing happened. Year after year after year, every year in their marriage, they were praying that somehow or another God would bless them and, and they would be able to have a child. And each year would pass by and nothing happened. You know, it's interesting because we know that God hears and we also know that God answers prayers. But stop for a minute. Is there something in your life just like in Zechariah and Elizabeth's life that you've been praying about and, and somehow or another it's just not happening. Is there something in your life that, that seems hopeless at this point? Maybe, maybe it's a health issue that you're struggling with. Maybe it's a financial issue that, that keeps you up at night. Maybe it's that wayward, disobedient child that's that's turning your hair white and driving you nuts. Maybe it's a situation at work or, or maybe it's a, a, a huge challenge that you're having in your family right now. Maybe you're confused and, and you just need some guidance in your life. Or maybe you're at the end of your rope. Maybe you're that person out there that's, that's watching us this morning and you've been praying for that that special someone that God would send in your life, that, that God would send you a mate. Maybe that's what you've been praying about. And somehow or another, you've been praying and, and God's not answering your prayer. You seem like your prayer is being left on hold. You know, when we're introduced to Zachariah and Elizabeth, they're righteous believers. They've been praying for a child and nothing is happening in their life. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever been praying and feeling like you're praying and you're doing the best that you can do and yet nothing seems to be changing in your life? You know, it's very easy when we're doing the best that we can do and we're believing in God and we're praying for God. It's, it's easy when, when something doesn't happen or things don't change in our life. It is so easy for us to begin to believe that that God's not interested in us. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 9, it says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who, who keeps the covenant and steadfast love for those who love him and keep his commandments and for a thousand generations. In other words, God is listening. God knows what's happening in your life. And God is going to move when the time is absolutely right. You know, it's amazing, something that maybe you didn't know, that for 400 years, God had been silent. Think about it. From the time the book of Malachi, this last book in the Old Testament, from the time it closes to the time that the very first chapter in Matthew opens, it's 400 years. 400 years, God hasn't said a word. Man, God hasn't communicated anything. God hasn't said anything. There have been no prophecies, no dreams, no visions, no angels, no communication from heaven whatsoever. God has been silent. Think about that. God's been silent for 400 years, but not idle. You know, sometimes we get that confused. Sometimes we think if God's not saying anything, if God's not telling us yes, no, or maybe, God's not interested, he's not doing anything. For 400 years, he hasn't said a word, but God has been working diligently in those 400 years. Sometimes when God is silent, we mistake his silence as inactiveness. 
He's not involved. He's, he's idle. He's not doing anything during that time. During those 400 years, God's been very active. God has been moving. He's been actively engaging and preparing to make his appearance to man in a personal way. Angels are being given directions and they're being prepared over those 400 years to, to do what he needs to have them do during that time. God is silent. But man, he's been extremely busy during that time. And the Bible reminds us in, in Luke chapter 1 that all of a sudden God breaks his silence and he decides to speak. Watch this thing. God's been silent for 400 years and, and all of a sudden he dispatches an angel and this angel comes to Zechariah and he begins to deliver a message. Verse number 11 of Luke chapter 1. It says, and there appeared unto him an angel, the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him and, and feared and fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. What do you mean his prayer has been heard? He's been praying for years, every day of his marriage. He's been praying, and all of a sudden now, the angel shows up and says, God's heard your prayer. Hey, you know what's amazing to me? It's amazing that God knows the right time to answer our prayers. Sometimes when God isn't moving on our time schedule, it's it's easy to believe that he's forgotten about us. And if we believe that and we think about that long enough, it begins to destroy our faith. And before we know it, hope disappears. But right on time, right on time, God sends the angel and the angel shows up to Zechariah and lets him know that God has been listening. He's heard every time you prayed about a child. God has been listening. God is always there. He says, Zechariah, man, you're going you're gonna to have a baby. Isn't it amazing that God says you're going to have a baby? Listen to me. Before there was Jesus, there was John the Baptist. And John had this, John had this unique job. I'll get this. John's job, hey, say that real fast. John's job was to bring the people back into a right relationship with God before the Messiah showed up because God was going to come in a personal relationship and personally connect with them. John's job was to get them ready for that connection. You see, we may not understand God's timing, but we know that God knows what he's doing. And when the time is right, God is going to do what's best in your life and what's best in my life. We've just got to continue to trust him and we've got to continue to wait on him. We're not forgotten. God always comes through and promises to be there for us. You see, God had a plan for his delay. God had this reason why he delayed giving them this baby and answering their prayers. Hey, have you ever thought about some of the things that God does and find yourself asking the question, what was God thinking about when he did that? I mean, think about it. Why does God wait till this couple are old and then he decides to send their first baby? What in the world was God thinking about when he did that? Why wait until he's an old man and she's an old woman to answer their prayer and to, to send them a baby? What was God thinking about? You know, as somebody who's, who's kind of up in age and seasoned in life right now, Man, I have two granddaughters, and I'm going to tell you that, that at times they can be a handful. Man, why would, why would God wait till this couple was old and then God chooses 
to send a child? Why not when they were younger and they had a lot of energy and a lot of zeal? He waits till they're older. You know, God chooses to wait till Zachariah and Elizabeth are old and then he sends a baby. God had chosen to send this baby at just the right time. Think about it. He comes and he says about this baby you're going to have. He says you're going to have joy and this baby's going to bring gladness. Not just to you, but to everybody all around. He's going to turn the children of Israel back to the Lord their God. He's going to go before him in the spirit of power of Elijah. And he's going to turn the hearts of fathers back to their children and, and disobedient children back to the wisdom and justice and make ready the coming of the Lord. I mean, think about that. Have you ever wondered why God doesn't answer our prayers as soon as we send them up? You know, I think that sometimes God waits for three things before he answers our prayers. Sometimes God waits on timing. The Bible reminds us in, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, that it was the fullness of time that God sent forth his son, made of a woman under the law. So sometimes God is waiting for the right time. You see, this idea of fullness, it means that, that it was a very specific point in time in history that God had chosen for the Messiah to be born. So God was waiting for the right time. And because Zachariah's son was supposed to set the stage or set the pace or bring people back to God, he had to be born before Jesus was born. Think about this thing. God has this very specific point in time to do things in your life and to do things in my life. And he's not going to move off that time until he knows that it's the right time. Well, we should be thankful for that. Hey, have you ever been praying for something and God didn't come through and God didn't give it to you? And then later on, you look back and you say, wow, I'm so glad that God didn't give me that when I asked for that. Yeah, what God is... It's, it's all about timing. But not only does God wait for timing, God waits for climate and the environment. Think about it. The environment had to be just right and then Jesus was born. The climate was perfect. People were at a point where they were tired of being sick and tired and, and they were looking for something different and it was the right time. For the Messiah to be born. And if it was the right time for the Messiah to be born, it was the right time for John to be born. But not only was God waiting for timing and waiting for climate, but God was waiting for mankind. You see, God was working on Zechariah and God was working on Elizabeth, trying to get them prepared and get them right. So they would be there for this baby when it came and, and they would be able to teach and nurture and get this baby ready to be the forerunner for the Messiah. Hey, there are times in life when God doesn't answer our prayer because he knows we're not ready to receive that type of blessing that, that he has in store for us. Man, there are times and things that I'm asking God for today that God recognizes that I'm not going to be ready until next year to receive them. And if he gave it to me now, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I mean, think about it. Some of you have small children. One day you're going to get them a car when they grow up, but they're not ready for it right now. Sometimes God is trying to prepare us and God is trying to get us together. God has the perfect time to bless you in the perfect way, but it has to happen in his time. We can't rush God and we can't keep God from doing it. God's going to move on his time schedule. The climate, the environment has to be absolutely right. We've got to be at a point where we can handle the blessings that God wants to give us. Sometimes our maturity level isn't where it needs to be for God to do what he wants to do because we're not ready yet. 
Sometimes it's not the right time. Sometimes it's, it's not the right climate. It's not the right environment. And sometimes it's you and sometimes it's me. We're not ready for God to do in us and through us what he wants to do. So God has to take a little bit longer to kind of groom us and, and get us together. But you know what the amazing thing is? We don't give up hope in the process. We keep hope alive. We keep praying. We keep recognizing that even though I'm praying about that health issue right now and nothing seems to be happening, God is still working on our case. He's still got a plan for that financial issue that's been worrying us at night. He's still turning around that wayward child and he's going to make them do what he needs to have them do for the vision that he has for their life. God is fixing that situation at work. That one that seems so unfair for you and so unfair to you. You know, God is still working on those challenges in your family situation. That new car, that new house, those things that you've been praying about and praying about and praying about. God is still fixing those. He's still got that set for you. He's still got that mate, that special person that, that you've been longing for and you've been praying for. He's got that person there. He's grooming and doing something in their life and doing something in your life so that when your two lives come together, they'll be perfect. Some of us are confused. And yet God is slowly giving us wisdom. He's slowly giving us guidance. He's slowly giving us the direction that he wants our lives to go. Listen to me. Christmas is a time of miracles. What does that mean? That means we're in a miracle season. Anything can happen. Those prayers, those prayers that you've been praying about, just like Zachariah and Elizabeth have been praying about all those years, all of a sudden it happened during this time. You know what that tells me? Man, that tells me that, that what you've been praying about and what I've been praying about, this is the season for that stuff to start happening. But we've got to continue to keep believing and having our hopes set in place. Feel like God's not answering your prayers? Maybe. Maybe. This is your season. Maybe this is the time when God is about to do something amazing in your life and the enemy is pushing you so hard to just walk away and stop believing because your miracle is right around the corner. This is the miracle season. Maybe. Maybe God is planning to do something even more special than you asked him for. This is your time. Don't give up just yet. It's simpler than you thought. It's easier than you believe. It's not as hopeless as you thought. God is still working in your life and still working stuff out. If he wasn't, you wouldn't be listening to me right here today. Let me pray with you. Lord, sometimes we, we pray and our timing is off. Lord, so for my friends that are viewing this and they're praying, Lord, I'm asking that, that you would somehow or another supernaturally connect their timeline with your timeline. Lord, I'm praying that, that you would continue to do in their life and get them ready for, for this huge blessing that you plan on sending in their life. They've been praying about some things and they've been believing for some things. Lord, I'm praying that you would do something out of the ordinary for them. Lord, you've been listening to their prayers and just like you heard Zachariah and Elizabeth's prayer all those years and then all of a sudden you sent their child. But my friends have been praying and they've been waiting patiently and they've been believing in you. Lord, help them so that they don't lose their belief right now. 
Lord, I know they're close, and I know you're close to doing what they've been asking for. Lord, help them to be patient just a little bit longer until you've got them in the place where you want to have them. I know it's a challenge, Lord. I know it's difficult, but, but this is the season of miracles. You can, you can do anything. Lord, be with them. Encourage them. Lord, bring healing to them. Lord, bring a miracle during this season in their life and, and they will give you the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. Lord, bless them like they've never been blessed before. I thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, we want to hear from you. Tell us what God is doing in your life. Tell us what you're praying about so that, that we can pray about that with you also. And then here's what's most important. Tell me when God answers your prayer and how he answers your prayer. Remember, this is a season of miracles. God's going to do something in your life this month. Let me know what he does. Hey, God bless you. I'm going to see you here again next week. Remember what we always say. Do all the good you can for as many people as you can, as often as you can. And watch God change your life also. I'll see you back here again next week.